It's like spending years in a Morris Minor and suddenly getting a Jaguar or something. The main thing about it is it's just bigger. It's the, the reed's bigger. Here's the, uh, there's a normal contrabassoon reed and there's a, a contraforte reed, which as you can see is sort of almost quarter bigger. Perhaps the most obvious change is that it now vents up here rather than down here, which the normal contra does. So there's an extra tube in it, uh, an extra bend if you like. They've changed the hand position. You can see that my hands are actually quite close together and it's very comfortable. On the old contra, this hands are way down here, uh, which makes it a bit uncomfortable. Funnily enough, the key work is in fact um, almost the same. Uh, but somehow this looks like the flight deck of the Concorde uh, with all this sort of stuff on it. It's, it's an absolutely beautiful instrument as you can see and the en engineering in it is amazing. Um, the, it's, it's just a beautiful thing. They're a bit controversial. The sound, depending on what reed you use, is a bit closer to a tuba than a contrabassoon. So uh, some people don't feel it's a contrabassoon at all. I've got a friend who plays in London and I told him we were getting this and he said, oh, it's not a contra, is it? And he, you know, and I've seen auditions where they specify that you're to play contrabassoon, not contraforte. So that's, that's B flat, that's the lowest note on the old contra, but this, this has an A. Everything's bigger on it. This, this key here, that one there, that is the same size as the very lowest note on the old instrument, um, but that's an A flat, so there's still basically another eight notes to go before you reach the very lowest note, which is here, which is this massive pad here. Um, so as a result of that, you can play a lot louder on it. Everything's bigger, the reed's bigger, the hole's bigger, the tubes are bigger, the pads are bigger. And then how high can it go? Well, really high, actually. They've got this very peculiar thing here, which is this little key up the top here. You can in fact get another one of those here, which enables it to play very, very high indeed. The same as the right of spring at pitch, which is the famous bassoon solo. And that's operated by a bicycle cable, uh, which runs down here. So when I operate this key here, you can see that little, little thing opening and shutting there. So to hear the two instruments, my colleague uh, Lenny uh, Hoyshin has very kindly agreed to play some duets. <laughs> So what's the contrabassoon good at? Well, I mean, it's, it's <laughs> arguably nothing, but um, it's, it's the very, very bass instrument in the woodwind. Um, so I guess very, very low notes. Um, yeah, they've got a slightly sort of rattly sort of sound. So that's a kind of a weakness that it has. Well, it's just how they sound, you know, it's just how they are. I mean, whether that's a weakness or not, uh, I don't know. The early ones, were quite out of tune and, and very rattly. And in about 1880, Heckel, which is a very famous name in bassoon making, they uh, made this sort of modern layout. Uh, so in part, they made all the curves so it's much more wieldy. And also they added all, those early ones had only about three keys. So as you can see, there's a, there's a sort of mess of key work now. And basically they've been unchanged until this century. Uh, there's not really been any major, major developments. Uh, what's the reaction from your conductors? They've been pretty positive. Uh, the brass are very positive. It, it blends really well with the brass because it's a bit more tubery. And there's something about the sound and the way it ends. If you're with a brass chorale, it feels really good. On the contrary, you'd get to a certain point and that's it. It won't go any louder. Whereas this thing, you can just, you know... 